all love to be healthier. It would be great if we were able to prevent or treat diseases just by adjusting our diet or living a healthy lifestyle. But is this sufficient to treat glaucoma? Let's find out. I love this topic. How we care for our bodies and what we consume plays a big role in our overall health, and it turns out it can have an effect in glaucoma too. The eyes are, in fact, attached to the body. Let's talk about some natural things we can do and consume to hopefully slow the progression of glaucoma and visual field loss. I'm going to break this down into five sections. What we can do, what we can eat, what we can drink, what we can take, and what we can smoke. I'll even include a bonus section on what research is showing doesn't have an effect on glaucoma or what you may be doing in your day-to-day -day life that might be making it worse. To get started today, what you need to know is that glaucoma causes irreversible vision loss for a number of underlying causes that we don't fully understand. But we do know that the only way we've shown to prevent glaucoma progression is to lower the eye pressure. To learn more about glaucoma, check out one of my other videos here. The natural ways to lower eye pressure that I'm about to share with you do come with some caveats, and I don't want anyone risking their vision, so please stick around until the end. Exercise seems to be a common denominator when it comes to maintaining good overall health. Research has shown that 30 minutes of low impact exercise a few days a week has lowered eye pressure two to four millimeters of mercury. And that's a pretty decent amount. There are some things to keep in mind with this that you should caution if you do certain activities. If you are a swimmer, we wanna make sure that the goggles are resting on the bony orbit and not pushing against the soft tissue, which could raise the eye pressure. Also, if you've had glaucoma surgery, that involves a bleb you could be at a higher risk for infection if you are swimming. For people who enjoy yoga, the head down position actually increases the eye pressure. So this would be downward dog or any position where your head is below your heart. And usually instructors will ask you if you have you know, any health concerns that they should know about, and you should be able to discuss with them some alternatives for various positions. Another one to keep in mind is weightlifting or anything that involves the Valsalva maneuver where you're kind of holding your breath and increasing the pressure in the body that can greatly increase eye pressure as well. If you're already a weightlifter, you know, it's probably not going to be a huge issue, uh, but it might not be something that you wanna take up if you're not doing already. And speaking of the Valsalva maneuver, this is a good thing to keep in mind if you are a musician, for example, um, especially with a brass or woodwind instrument where it involves a lot of pressure behind your breath. It would be a good idea to talk with your eye care provider to have your eye pressure checked before playing the instrument and shortly after to be sure that the pressure doesn't spike significantly, especially if your livelihood depends on your instrument. Let's talk about meditation. Stress has been shown to increase eye pressure, so it makes sense that meditation, fully relaxing the body, will help to lower eye pressure. There are countless conditions in the body that are worsened by stress. Heart disease is one of them. There's even a condition where the macula swells due to stress, so it makes sense that eye pressure could be affected by this as well. And meditation has been shown to be able to lower the eye pressure about 25%, which is actually really close to the target we aim for with initial glaucoma treatment in most mild cases. Many people aren't well practiced in meditation, so you may need a guide in there, and it's hard to know exactly how much is lowering your particular eye pressure, but it certainly couldn't hurt to add to your routine if you have the time. There are a few factors regarding sleep to keep in mind when it comes to glaucoma, and one of those is sleep apnea. The optic nerve needs blood flow, and one of the causes of optic nerve damage in glaucoma is lack of blood flow to the nerve. We know that in sleep apnea, there are periods where someone may not be breathing. So if they're not getting oxygen to the bloodstream, they're not getting oxygen to the nerve during those periods, and so this can really worsen glaucoma and cause progression of vision loss. So controlling sleep apnea is a must. Another thing to keep in mind with your sleep schedule is the timing of other medications and how that may affect glaucoma. It may be important to work with your cardiologist or internist if you take a blood pressure lowering medication, because if this is used at night, 
this may negatively affect glaucoma. That is because at night, our blood pressure is naturally lower and we don't want it to get too low to the point where the optic nerve isn't getting enough oxygen, similarly to what we're discussing regarding sleep apnea. So it may be best to take blood pressure medications in the morning rather than the evening. But again, of course, you must discuss that with your personal care providers. Our final consideration regarding sleep is going to be your sleep position. Sleeping face down can actually raise the eye pressure in the eyes. And if you sleep on your side, the eye that's closest to the pillow will usually have the higher eye pressure as well. So an ideal sleep position would be on your back and if possible with your head elevated around 15 to 30 degrees. But the most important thing is that you're able to sleep well. The amount that this may change the eye pressure might not be significant and you can't go the rest of your life with really rough sleep. So ultimately, if you can, back is best, side is second best and face down, uh, best to avoid that position if you can. Really my goal here with this information is to help you make small adjustments if they're achievable in your day-to-day -day lifestyle. You don't have to do all of these things and you just really have to find which is going to work better for you and discuss with your doctor what might be most beneficial for you. With that, let's talk about what you can eat. To lower the eye pressure naturally, it is best to have a naturally based diet, and that would include more fruits and vegetables, especially leafy green vegetables. That would include fruits and vegetables that are high in antioxidants, vitamin A, vitamin C, and carotenoids. Now that being said, you can't just take vitamin A and C pills and call it a day. More on that in a little bit. These leafy green vegetables are great because they're high in nitrates and nitric oxide has been the basis of a lot of new drops that are out there that help to relax the trabecular meshwork, which helps to allow more fluid to flow out of the eye. Some of these would include collard greens, kale, spinach, arugula, and lettuce. Glaucoma patients should always be checking in with their eye care provider for eye pressure checks, but it is still hard to know how each of these individual foods is improving your eye pressure. And that's why these are considered adjunctive treatments to whatever therapy your glaucoma specialist or eye doctor recommends, because we don't know how much they lower the eye pressure or if they're really doing it around the clock like the eye drops do to properly treat glaucoma on its own. Now on to what you can drink. It's shown that the flavonoids in tea can help to reduce eye pressure. So it may be beneficial to drink one cup of hot tea per day. As far as alcohol goes, some studies show positive results and some negative in regards to glaucoma control. So at this point, that's kind of a wash. Now let's talk more about those vitamins, what you can take. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of talking about vitamins and supplements with your individual provider before you start taking them. They can affect various conditions, especially if you're pregnant. This is all important to look at before you start anything new. I touched on a little earlier about vitamin A and C in your foods being able to lower the eye pressure, but it turns out that if you take these in supplement form, they are not sufficient at lowering the eye pressure. So eat your fruits and vegetables. Now let's talk more about supplements. Ginkgo biloba was really promising at first. It's shown to improve blood flow to the optic nerve, which we've talked about is very important, but it hasn't been shown to lower eye pressure, which is how we know to control glaucoma. It did show improved visual field testing in some studies, but more recent studies are starting to counteract those positives that we were learning about, and it may not make much of a difference at all. So more research is definitely necessary moving forward. Blackcurrant, mertogenol, palmitoyl ethanolamide, omega-3 and forskolin have all been shown to lower eye pressure and may be promising at being an adjunctive therapy for glaucoma. Studies have shown citicoline and magnesium have a positive effect on the visual field in glaucoma, but not necessarily that they lower the eye pressure. Now let's talk about what we can smoke perhaps. Well, marijuana has long been known to lower the eye pressure and it does so pretty successfully, about 25%, but it has a really short duration of action. So you would need to be smoking it around the clock, like every two to four hours or so. And that includes waking up during the night to do so. Also, it has a lot of side effects. Now this may seem attractive to some people, but it's just not feasible and it would also be quite expensive. Whereas a lot of glaucoma drops are actually quite inexpensive, especially those that have been around for a while. 
So if you're looking for a medical marijuana prescription, your eye doctor may not be the one to ask. Now let's talk about what has not been proven to work. We already touched on vitamins and that it's better to get those from your foods because just vitamin in pill form is not going to cut it. And we talked about alcohol as well. Though dehydration can help to lower the fluid in the body and therefore lower the eye pressure, drinking a lot to control the eye pressure is not a good way to go about this. More recent studies have shown that eye pressure is not significantly reduced with acupuncture and that it actually may increase slightly following treatment. Now I'm thinking perhaps this is because you'd be in a lying down position and that tends to raise eye pressure, but I don't know that for sure. If you have glaucoma, there are some things that you do not want to do, and that would be smoking. Smoking tends to be bad for everything, and that includes glaucoma as well. In regards to vaping, we really don't know that much about that yet. For caffeine, drinking too much caffeine can increase the eye pressure. This would be about three or more cups of coffee per day. So after you've had your first two cups of coffee, you could supplement with tea because we know that that can actually help with glaucoma. Finally, you don't wanna drink water really fast. Now water is great for so many things and it's definitely important for your health, but we're talking like a quart in five minutes or less. So not many people are doing that anyway. This is the part I really want people to take to heart. These are not natural cures or remedies for glaucoma. They can lower the eye pressure by a couple of points, but they tend to not be able to lower it to a significant enough degree to control glaucoma on their own, or even if you use a number of these methods. And when we use these methods together, they're not additive. If one tends to lower pressure by one millimeter of mercury and another by two and another by three, you can't add that up to six. It just doesn't work that way. If you did all of these things, then you could potentially have a negative eye pressure if that was the case, and obviously that's not possible. So what we want to do is to control the eye pressure in the way that we know works, and that is with typically eye drops as well as other treatments that are out there for glaucoma. And these would be adjunctive therapies that you can do in addition to those things. And on top of that, it's so important to discuss with your provider what is going to work best for you. You don't, again, have to do all of these things, but you could consider some of them and you wanna find what's going to work best with your lifestyle and what's going to be feasible for you. If you liked this video, I know you'll like this one here. Check it out for more glaucoma facts your eye doctor wishes you knew.